My name is Abe Sender. I was born in Poland in 1922, February the 10th. I grew up in the same city, close to the German border. And I went to school, started school by seven year old. Only went five grades. Because I'm not the rich, I was a poor boy. I liked to eat, I was a big eater. And I couldn't, they couldn't afford to feed me or to dress me. So I went, they introduced me by the packing house. I'm a butcher. By the packing house, and I started walking there. And finally, there was one family, a big family of 13 children. They liked me. I always volunteered for hard work. When I walked, they fed me. They gave me room and board over there. And I walked there till the, till the war was to start the war. I remember the... The Germans moved in in September, I think the second or the third. And I still was walking part in the packing house, and then they make a curfew. You couldn't go out from the house. We live in one room, six of us in one room. And we couldn't go out from the house. From seven in the morning, from seven in the evening was a curfew. Whoever got caught in the street uh, after seven got shot. When the Germans moved in, they came with the power, with tanks, in motorcycle, they gas, and whoever was in the street, they didn't care, they shoot anybody. There was a lot of deaths. So the following days, we have to take the corpse, the dead people, and bury on a certain mass, mass grave. And I walked in the packing house during the day. There were Polish people, most were Polish people, and they know me because I walked all my youth for six years there. And they helped me. There was no problem. They, at 7 o'clock, I have to be home. One day in 40, 1940, I remember, they make in the street, whoever was in the street with trucks, they grabbed the people and they took him to a high school with a big hole there. And they took, they, grabbed, they took me. My brother was captured two weeks before the older brother. And they sent him to Germany to a, to a camp. They make him the war camp. You know, it was was no concentration camp, 1940, but four slave camps. I was captured, they took us to a high school in a big hall, and they select, make a selection who was strong, weak, under, under 18, they let them out. Over 40, only between 18 and 40. And they took us away to the Polish Czechoslovakian border, right, the south, uh, southeast Poland, and we walk with security, with the SS, the Ghana, but we lived in a house there. And the farmer, the German farmer, took over 23 Polish farms. And they didn't need any 20 houses. It's more like two, three-room house, or 20 barns. So we were in groups, 25, 30 groups, and we torn down the houses in the... But one, we left one house and one or two barns. And we slept in the house, the last house. We slept, we turned down, went to other village. And so we gone from village to village. And I was walking over there from 1940 August till 41, around September. Then we went back to, not my hometown, but six kilometers in the high school. They took a big auditorium and came a German in 19, about two weeks later, came a German from in Germany, he needs 100 young boys. The age was between, I was 18 at that time, because I was born in 1922, I was 18, 19 years old. He took the strongest guys to Germany to a factory. And the factory was a weaving factory. They make materials for, for uniforms, for all kinds of stuff. I mean, there was six or 700 women, Jewish women, and for about 75 men. We do the, the hard work, and the women, like my wife, I, I met her then, but two years later I met her, and she was on a weaving machine. We live in a barrack, not in a barrack, in a building, in the same building with the women. Only thing, a wall divided. And the women had a kitchen, the main kitchen was in the women's kitchen, and we got every day two meals in the morning, like like coffee, make out of chicory and a piece of bread, piece of margarine. The evening we had a soup, always potato soup. They, they, they were qualified for potato soup. And we were wearing civilian clothes. That's all I had, a pants, a jacket, a underwear. For two years, I wear the same clothes. 
Oh, I took a shower once a month or once in three months. I don't remember taking a shower. We had no showers. The women went inside to the women's shower room and they came with a big building. It was beds, you know, stacked up three beds high and we had the same thing. And uh, we have to wait to survive, survive the time in the camps. One day, the camp leader came, he said, we're going to liquidate that camp. They sent us to other camp. When they went and they came trucks, and I had no nothing, no belongings. Some people had, there were some rich people who had some little money, a gold ring, a watch. I had nothing. The only thing I had letters from home where they wrote me with the censored letters, and I had a few pictures. They load us up on truck, on the same truck, on the same day came women. About 25 or 50 women came, like men, dressed in overhauls, shaved their heads, and they took our jobs. Our, our hard work workers, carpenters, plumbers, all kinds of and clothing trucks. And when they took us with the truck, we went maybe about 200 kilometers. And then we got in the forest, we got in the forest, was a, we saw towers, barbed wire. I never saw barbed wires before. It was barbed wires and towers with Germans on a tower. And that was concentration camp start, 1942. Wait a minute. End of, end of 1942. There was a new concentration camp built, a small one, around 3,000 people. There was a group from, if you hear, Gross Rosen. That's a group of close to us. There were a lot of little camps. And we got in, the, and on the truck came out, there was two, three guys. They were Germans, prisoners, Green Triangle. And they told, they went out, they killed two boys right on the truck. And they scared us, and they said a speech. And they were in the, inside the gate already. He said, whatever you got, belongings, money, gold, diamonds, laid out. So. Everybody was so scared for him, everybody had to lay it out. I had nothing to give it to, I had no money or, or gold. And we wind up in that camp, and uh, as we give out, then we take, we're going to take a shower now. He went, and they took us in the shower room, to make big tables, big tables like uh, big picnic tables, and everybody who had in the pocket, some friends of mine, they were wealthy, they had buttons had uh, gold pieces, so they sewed around like this one with a piece of cloth as the button for scared. They saw what happened, they even give the buttons up. And they took us to a shower room. Went to a shower room and got our clothes off, all of us. One, we took a shower, we stay all, and they gave us little soap, little liquid soap. And we shower, we clean up, because we were filthy and dirty. And as we clean up, we didn't dry because we had no tarts to dry. And when stay in the line, then was barbers. It was not really barbers, it had clippers, and they shaved us off, all of us, and they cut us hair like a crew cut. In the middle of the head, right here, they shaved, I wouldn't say shaved, it's also a clipper with fine clipper, you know what I mean? So the hair was by inch, by inch three quarter high. In the middle, they shaved us out in the middle, but that white strip. In case you run away, you, you'll be recognized. When I went out from the shower, after they shaved us all over, and they put lysol like uh, acid around, you know, around, we started yelling. When I went out from the shower room, all of us, there was no clothing no more. They give us the stripe uniform. We went one side in and the other side went out. So the clothes, we lost, I lost all the pictures, whatever I had, uh, everybody lost everything. We got the striped uniform and we went out. There we had a meal, we had a soup, a piece of bread, and we went to barracks. And they put us in barracks. And as we were there in the barracks, I, meet, I met some other people that were from different cities, from different camps they liquidated. And we went, next day we had a cup, we had a block leader, it was about maybe 80 or 100 in a barrack. 
and we had no beds, but we had shelves, and we laid, lined up uh, on straw, and we slept on that. That was our, our bed to live in. He went to work. That was a war concentration camp. They built the new buildings, we enclosed boxcars, like loose, loose cement, loose sand, bricks. And we, we loaded up on truck with sacks, and we, in some other places, they, on the truck, they build buildings. And that was our job. We went to forest, there was a lot of forest over there. We cut with tensor, we cut the trees down, then we cut them certain sizes, we load them on trucks. So every day, we walk about 12 hours a day, from sundown, from sunup to sundown. And when the time was, uh, we came home in the dark, and we, on the march, we were singing, you know, it was German, say, sing German songs, whatever. And we, were, we got used to, to it, to walk, but I, I was lucky. I, had two, I found two pieces of wire, you know, two pieces of wire. We had no pocket, we only had uh, like a coffee can for the soup out of the tin. And I found two pieces of wire where I walked there and always tie my ankles with the wire. If I found some potatoes or carrots, I just put in my pants. And once I put coal, you know, I found uh, pieces of coal because it was in winter time, we had an oven in the barrack. You have to see, like the farm has got to be a round oven. We have to heat it, the oven with the coal or with wood. So they call it briquettes. And you know, made blocks like looked like a brick. The Germans made out of the coal, and I I smuggled in. That and that went by for for a long time. Every day we went to work, and every day we got back. I met over the Russian prisoners, Italian prisoners. They were in different camps, but we went to work in the forest. And uh, then was a one German, my informant came. All Germans, but they're not qualified for to be a soldier, like 45, 50, 60 year old. They came to work for seven day, six days a week. So we don't work on Sunday, because they want to take off one day, so we stay Sunday home. So we work in the camp, cut, I mean, wreck, empty toilets. There was no toilets in the bag. Was one general toilet with like a, oh maybe I would say about. Eight ten feet deep, and was a bar, a wooden bar over, it, and that was our toilet. And uh, then they empty it with, with buckets. They empty it, and the farmers using it as as a uh, what do you call it? As a fertilizer for potatoes. The human waste. In for 1944, the war, the Russian, the Germans start retreating, in the Russian came closer from Poland. Poland was already liberated. Some camps were liberated in 44. We stayed in 44, and one morning, he said, now we're gonna march to a different camp, farther south. And they went a truck, went with the, you know, a big platform truck, and about 10 or 50 or 20 boys was pulling the truck with no tractor, no motor, just a flatbed to bring the bread from the back about 10 kilometers away. They never showed up back because they were already captured by the Russian. And we were about 10 miles away, about 10 kilometers from the Russian, and we marched out without food, without food to a different camps. And we were marching for weeks. We were filthy, we didn't get any food, we get a little soup. There was a, like you see, an army kitchen on the road. You see army kitchen with a kettle, the, you know, the heat it and they cook soup. It was much. So every night we marched, we slept in on the farm. So you couldn't go on the on the main highway. We went with side roads. And the Germans keep retreating right behind us. If we would, uh, you couldn't run away. Some friends of mine, some ran away and they got killed. One day, Maybe we marched maybe five, six weeks. We were filthy, we left in the barns. I helped myself. I went to the hog barns. The farmers cook, you know, little potatoes. With the, they make their own flour. They cook them. I pull out in the hogs the potatoes. And I ate. 
Who the bag could eat? Oh, it's a pack. I show myself inside a packet full. A packet from the material, or the material. In a head packet, oats, be a little can, be marked from winter time. With wooden shoe, no underwear, just a striped uniform. No, no underwear. And we, I went up in the middle, no water. We marched for, uh, from sundown, from sunrise to sundown. And I have to bend down and scrape little snow. One day, Sunday, the, the Germans will take off the soul rest. He said, the, the camp leader said, boys, now you're going to go take a shower. Oh, everybody was running so happy to take a shower when hundreds of us in the time. They took us in the middle of the forest, middle of the farm, in a lake. It was still the ice. I could see the ice still, a sheet of ice. I was a good swimmer. When I was young, as a matter of fact, I, I'm a good swimmer. I used to dive from the bridges to the, near the river in the city. I saw what happened, say, get undressed. We got undressed. And now go take a bath. So I dove in the water. I didn't care how deep it is, but I was a good swimmer. Some of them couldn't swim with the machine gun. Some of them got shot. Some of them ground over there. And we stay in the next group. We really told him, don't go. But... Because we know what happened. Everybody thought we go to a shower room, we're going to take a shower, a bath, you know what I mean? That was in winter time in January. I think it was January, because we didn't know no dates or month. I know we left before Christmas. We left before Christmas that came, and we, we, we marched for 13 weeks. And like I said, I always volunteered. There were wings, big hay wings. The sick, there was no doctors. So the sick was on a hay wagon, 40, 50 of them, and we pulled them with ropes and some pushing with ropes. And we got our meal in the evening, a piece of bread and a little soup, what they call. And some, like I said, I helped myself. I got a few raw potatoes. I was eating it. But one day, the German said, now the sick going to go to a hospital, to a hospital. So we pulled them to a hospital. Pull them on the cemetery, we dig a hole, and we dump them life, and the machine gun was going back and forth. And when I showed them, I see the bodies were still up. That was what the whole thing I went through. We marched for, for 12, 13 weeks, we got into Buchenwald. Buchenwald was a camp, maybe 20,000 people. Capacity of 20,000 people, so many barracks. When we got in, were 60,000 people. We didn't hardly get what to eat. We wind up, our group went out, was about 1,200. We got into the camp, maybe 500, but 700 died on the way. So I was only in Buchenwald for three weeks. The last three days, the last, the last week, he said, all all Jews, all Jews have to report to the gate in the front. So they start the chasing us. Some Germans took off the bands, you know, they didn't want to chase. They know what they know what's going to happen. From the end of the camp, from uh, old camp, was the barracks, and the new camp was already buildings, built of brick buildings. They start chasing us. I wasn't the old barrack. I came to to the front gate, like you see here in the United States Army camp, they have to report, you know, like you see in the camp, in the Army camp. And they stay in line up and they march out. They give everybody a piece of bread and a piece of margarine. And people was uh, willing to go out. They killed the most. And they, they stopped so many, they had so many security guards, and they stopped them. And then they came back, they brought the same bread back in the give in the same time I stay maybe thirty or forty away from the front gate, there came alarm. American planes start coming. I know what a helicopter was. I saw, I saw a plane and never started start yelling into the barracks. So I saw what happened. I couldn't get in my barrack no more. I went down. I was hungry. I I saw where the they had a big platform 
truck, not truck, a wagon, what they with two with four Belgian horses they had the the hole from the kitchen, the food, to each barrack. You see, maybe you've seen it here, like a can, like a milk can. The farm has got with two handles. And they hold those cans to the barracks. They give to the barracks. You got in the barrack, the barrack leader, he likes you. He dig out the soup from the bottom. If he don't like you, they give you the water from the top. I didn't go back to the barrack. I went down to the barn where the horses were. And there were potatoes, and I found a chuke bag. A bullet chuke bag was wet, was, well, was still a lot of sugar from the wetness, got a lot of chuke. And I chewed that sack for three days. And I had some oats, and for the horses, I had some potatoes, and I slept on the hay above the horses. When I kicked, I found somebody else there was hiding out, was hiding out. Then when I hid out there, for three days. The third day, in Buchenwald, I went out. I looked down from the hill to the, from, my, from the barn. I see trucks coming, tanks, trucks. There was Americans. And as soon as they got in, the Americans, they came before the evening day. They opened the gate. They went to the electric and they cut all electric wires. And the Germans were still in the towers watching us. They didn't know what's going on. And I remember there came a helicopter. The first time I saw a helicopter, I know what a helicopter, I know an airplane. I never saw a helicopter. They dropped cases of sea ration food. So I grabbed it, I ran there, my, I saw the tanks coming. We saw the American with the star. It was no Germans, it's got to be uh, the enemy of the Germans, it's got to be friends. And when I got there to the to the father, when they dropped it, I could, I got two packages. It was four cigarettes in a pack, a little can of sardines, and four crackers. Uh, crackers, that I kept. And the Americans already in the camp, and the Germans ran away, and we started talking, I couldn't speak any English. What happened was that I know a captain or lieutenant, and I stayed there when, when I grabbed it, I had, my pants were all torn, was all body was shown out. And he started talking to me English, couldn't understand a word English. And I said, Polski, Polski, but I am a Polak. And he started talking to me Polish. <laughs> I say, how do you know Polish? I said, the captain, I know was the captain or lieutenant. I say, my parents were in Poland, and I was, I'm a Polish, I'm born in Chicago. In fact, I was there in Chicago, looked up, couldn't find him. And he took four of us with the Russians into the barracks, and the American took over the German barracks. That five, six beds, regular bed, but stacked up bed, and we start walking, and we the feathers. Beginning, I'll tell you the truth, I hated him. I told you he's teasing me. He took out a can of chicken. You know, the, the send him overseas. He gave me a wink. I could eat up the, the, the metal too. Then he took a piece of chocolate. He broke off a little piece, gave me a little piece, gave the other guys a little piece. And we asked him, why are you doing that to us? He took us by the arm, and that after two, three days already, people was, and the American went out and they found, you know, uh, wild hogs in the forest, and they cooked pea soup and potato soup with pieces of fat like that floating around in the soup and people were eating and people were dying by the thousands because their system was not used to to eat that food. And he told me, if I gave you the whole chicken, you're gonna lay outside. And then we start to realize what he done to us. So we shine the shoes, we make the bed for them, the feathers every day they get our system little bit in the time to get our system used to. It went by a few weeks like that. The American captain or something, he gave me a pair of pants. He saw my uniform. He gave me a pair of pants from some GI in a pair of shoes because we didn't have no shoes. We had wooden shoes. We had uh, clawed sides in a wood shoe. When I was walking in the snow, it was walking, got, got so high, got stick to the shoes. I lost the shoes in Buchenwald. I was barefooted. So some GI must have two pairs of shoes, 
and they gave me a pair of shoes and a pair of pants, and I was wearing the jacket. So it took me about two weeks. We moved from Buchenwald into the city. We took over by German house, a room, and, and that happened. It was my cousin, my present wife. The only relatives uh, I know I could uh, had. And I went to Bergen, Belgium on a bicycle. I, there was no transportation, no trains, no, uh, no buses, nothing. So I took away from the German a bicycle, I rode a bicycle, some American army truck went by, I hold on to the to the truck and I go a little faster. As I got into the English zone by the, by the English, I found my brother in the English zone. I said, what are you doing here? He said, come on with me. I stopped in Bergen, Belgium. I took my cousin and the other uh, cousin of hers. She was walking in the kitchen, she was helping my, my cousin doing the war in the, in the camp, and went to Weimar. And he decided to go back to Poland looking for families. Nothing to know. I got into my hometown, there was nobody there. Was, I went to my cousin's uh, town. There were a few people over there, and they said, nobody survived. And my friend said, let's come to my town, Lodge. It was about 300 or 400 kilometers away. There were transportation boxcars. He said, oh, on a boxcar, oh, on the roof, and top on the boxcar. We got into town, there were four of us. We got into my, to my friend's town lodge. There were some survivors, some hidden out in the, in the bunkers or someplace in the sewer lines, a family. And there were neighbors to my friend. When we got there, they only had one room. There was, there was quite a few survivors came from all city looking for, for the families. And he said, kids, are you married? I said, no, so you cannot sleep here. You got to get married. So I said, so we get married. We didn't attempt to get married. I told my cousin, I said, I went downstairs in the main street. I see a man, you know, like a big rabbi with a beard, with a big frog, a hat. I said, are you a rabbi? He said, yeah. I told him, can you marry us today? Can you marry us? He said, yes. I said, when? I said, tonight. We got married, and then we stayed there for all the week. We started getting trouble over there. Russian, Poles for the, they call it AKS, the start, because I have nothing to, in Poland to look for. I, had no, I was no rich. Some rich people came to collect their wealth. Some of them got killed. Some of them had houses, you know, and they want to take away, and they, they got killed for it. And they started pogroms. And I told to my friend, and my friend told me, talk, said, let's go back to Germany. In Germany, we're going to try to get in the West Zone to the Americans. So we wind up on a train going back through Poland, and I signed my name in case somebody survived. They see, in, there was a Jewish uh, office there. There were a few people walking, and some people, in case somebody came, and my sister, as a matter of fact, she found me, my name, that I'm alive. She was in Russia, survived with her husband in Russia during the war. And they saw, say, we going back to right, we going back to Germany and went through the border. It was it was hard to go through the border too. Because then on one side the Russian border, the Polish border and the Russian border, we smuggled it to the American zone. I got in to Frankfurt, Frankfurt the Main. And I met some people over there and they told me met some Survivors, we could recognize some with the striped uniform. He said, where are you going? I said, there is about 10 kilometers is a displaced person camp by, by Hex, by Salzheim. I got there in 1945, and my friend went someplace else to buy, uh, Bavaria, Bavaria, and I got there, and I met over there a lot of, a lot of my friends from my hometown. I mean, my age people. When the older people was 22, 25, 27, that age people, and I survived it. I stayed there, and my wife got pregnant. I married her, my wife got pregnant, and my son was born in 1946. And I lived there till 1949. Till ni yeah, 1948, actually. And I registered, in this year, I registered to go leave Germany to the United States. I was a butcher. And so I registered to Australia, Argentina, Canada. We had registration. Wherever I want to leave Germany. I said, I had enough. I want to leave Germany. He came 
they called me as a butcher. We trained from that came to other displaced person came about thirty miles away, and I waited for till they're gonna call me to come to the United States. I wind up in a camp before oh maybe fifty kilometers from the ocean before we went on a ship. So a big was a big map, bigger than that wall, maybe three feet wide and about ten feet high. And I see Kansas City. I see horses and cows in the street on that map. We see we see Chicago, Illinois, Kansas, but Kansas, Missouri was all a farm town. And I as a butcher they shipped me here to Kansas City. 